Hello, this time I'd like to talk about Convert to Keyframe Advanced. Never forget that you can always open the help file and click on an item which interests you to find the latest information from our website. Convert to Keyframe Advanced converts selected frames to keyframes. It preserves simple and customizing and classic tweens when keyframes are created in the middle of an existing tween. And also, this is very important for all of you Animate CC users out there, you must switch to convert to keyframe advanced completely if you use smart magnet rigging because uh, this is the only way you can transfer smart magnet metadata from key to key. There are two modes of the command, standard mode, shortcut key X and extreme mode, shortcut key Alt plus X. The command also has lots of options and I would like to now walk you through all the ways of using it. Let's have a look at Edapt control panel first. If we click settings, we can see all these options. I'll now walk you through the options one by one. Now, first of all, let me demonstrate the extreme mode. If we have no selection whatsoever, and press Alt plus X. The command will basically slice through the entire timeline. As you could see, we created a key that spans across all layers. I will undo and show you another function of the extreme mode. If we have a single selected frame or could be a range of frames on a single layer which is nested inside a folder as you can see there's this folder called robot and it contains the robot bits and pieces so if I select these frames and press alt x you can see how the selection expands across all layers that are nested within the folder starting from just a single layer. Normal mode is just X. If you would like to just create some keys the way you would uh, by using the F6, you can make a selection, then press X and you will get exactly the same result. But if you say you nest your character inside a folder, you don't really need to make a selection like this. All that you need to do is target the folder layer and press X. The command will slice through the contents of all the nested layers. Okay, so how about if we would like to skip some layers? There are several different options. Just something else that you might have not noticed yet. There's a quick way of accessing Tool settings by pressing F12. F12 will open the options for the last used EDAP command. Okay, I would like to point your attention towards two options to skip layers. One would be exclude locked layers and the other one would be to use a keyword. If you would like to temporarily exclude a layer and maintain um, extreme flexibility of what you're excluding and what you're not excluding, you should probably go for this option, exclude locked layers. If I say OK and lock a random number of layers and then press X, you will see how keys were not created for these layers. In certain situations, this is very, very handy. In some other situations, it may not be what you need. So the other option would be, as we could see here, using a keyword. You can type in your own keyword. In the default case, we should just add no key with two slashes to the layer name. So let's imagine that I would like to exclude this shadow from keying. All I need to do is just type slash slash no key 
Now, if I use the convert to keyframe advanced by pressing X, you can see it created keys within the selection, but it skipped the shadow. Now let's look at all the other available settings. Exclude layers with audio should be very self-explanatory, but I need to, I suppose, explain what recursive means. Keep in mind when recursive is active and we have a subfolder within our folder. I'll nest a few layers inside this subfolder and hit X. You can see it goes recursively within the nested folder and keeps slicing through the layers. So it created keys within the subfolder. Now I'll switch recursive off and press X. Okay, the content of this folder is now protected. As you could see, we skipped all the layers that were nested inside the subfolder. So this is another way possibly of protecting your layers. One more important thing, even if a layer is protected by a no key word, if you specifically select a particular frame and press X, the protection will be overridden and you will get a key. The last thing I would like to show you is how Convert to Keyframes Advanced preserves easing in classic tweens. I'll, I'll create a classic tween with an ease out of 100. You can clearly see how the in-betweens are getting closer and closer towards the second key. If I choose the default flash convert to keyframes, what it does, it basically breaks the tween. It changes the positioning of everything. If we look at this portion here, the first part eases out towards a newly created middle key at 100. And then from this new key towards the second key, we have no easing whatsoever. So it just breaks the flow of this animation and we can't really use this to add a breakdown undo and instead of using the default I'll use convert to keyframe advanced I'll pay attention this became more prominent because it was converted to a key but no change in the placement of all those in-betweens happened so the character of the movement is completely preserved. If we look at the graph here, it starts slowly and then in the second part it eases out. Now we can use this new key properly as a breakdown position to get some overlap. Splitting tweens will work even with S-curves such as ease in and ease out for example. Add a key in the middle, it splits the custom graph into halves and we can see how both arcs of this ease in ease out graph have been preserved intact. I think that covers everything. Thanks for watching.